folks. Oh, wait, I have something for this. One second. Folks, you guys see this? Not bad, huh? Uh, so a lot of people have asked me. I made a video a little while ago where I talked about how Street Fighter 6 has very powerful fireballs. In my opinion, fireballs in this game are some of the strongest they've been in Street Fighter games in several years. But of course, they're balanced out by the fact that the game has some good anti-fireball mechanics like parry, drive impact, stuff like that. So a lot of people asked me in the comments. They said, what makes a fireball good? Isn't a fireball a fireball? What's the difference between a really good fireball and, you know, a mediocre or bad fireball? So that's what I want to talk about today. We're going to go through some of the examples of really, really good fireballs in Street Fighter games and what it is about them that makes them so strong. And guys, if you're interested in getting the, the folks retro t-shirt it's it's got a really cool like vintage style look to it it's on sale jmcroftsmerch.com the link will be in the description like all my drops like this we're doing a hundred of them and once they're gone they're gone so get in now if you want your own folks shirt but let's jump in and start looking at these fireballs guys so the first aspect of a fireball that can affect how strong it is is its frame data so how long does the fireball take to do so in street fighter 6 for example ryu's fireball has a total duration of 47 frames 15 frames of startup 32 frames of recovery and that's pretty good but it's not like incredible. Let's talk about a fireball that's actually incredible. And that is of course, Guile. So Guile, his light sonic boom is a total duration of 30 frames, half a second. That's what, like 33% faster than Ryu or something? This thing is absurdly fast on recovery. And that's what allows Guile to do all these crazy combos where he like combos off the fireball like that. He can do that because the fireball has very fast recovery. But there's another thing that this short recovery really enables, which is that it is very, very hard to punish on block. I mean, can you see how fast Guile is able to block here? Look, I cannot jump over this and punish it like at all. It's like almost impossible to punish Guile Fireball in a lot of these older games. It's really insane how fast this recovers. Compare that to Ryu. His fireball has, you know, what feels like an eternity of startup compared to this. So you can get punished really big if the opponent has the right read and jumps over your fireball. So fast recovery is a really essential thing for fireballs to have. Here in Street Fighter 6, Guile's fireball, his sonic boom is actually a bit slower. It's 40 frames total duration, so 10 frames more. 31 frames of recovery so it is going to be easier to punish in this game but it is still very fast and a good deal faster than ryu's fireball once again at 47. but ryu has two other types of fireballs that have better frame data one is going to be his ex 40 frames total duration pretty insane uh for an ex fireball and this has another advantage which is that it knocks them down on hit so the different properties that a fireball has can be just as important or more important than their frame data. And one of the nice things about having a fireball that knocks down is this gives Ryu an opportunity to charge up his dungeon so he can start doing some crazy combos if he wants to or throw dungeon fireballs, which by the way, 42 frames total duration. This is pretty darn fast as well. And this is another property that fireballs can have is literally the speed they travel across the screen can make a big difference. So one thing that I think is really noticeable in Street Fighter 6 is that the speed of slow versus fast fireballs is really insane. Fast fireballs feel really fast, which makes them hard to predict, hard to jump around. And then just look how fast the Denjin fireball is. It's full screen in like an instant. Even jumping this on reaction from like most screen positions is like really hard. Most players will get hit out of jump startup just because this travels across the screen so insanely quickly. And once again, it knocks down on hit, which is going to give you the opportunity to charge another one. Of course, depending on the character, a fast fireball might not be what you want. Chun-Li, for example, she has a slow fireball that she can follow behind which is really useful because there are some matchups where Chun-Li is not really going to be able to win the fireball war. She's going to have to be kind of the one on the aggressive. So having this is a really, really good anti-neutral option to just throw this out, walk behind it and be like, all right, it's my turn. I'm going to get in. I'm going to start mixing you up and that kind of thing. So the speed of the fireball is really important. Literally how fast it travels across the screen, the frame data of the fireball, how long is the startup and the recovery 
and of course the properties of the fireball on hit and stuff does it knock down that kind of thing how many hits does it have will it destroy other fireballs those kinds of things are really important but we've talked about street fighter 6 this game has pretty good fireballs but they are nothing compared to a certain little game that i want to fire up and show you guys Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. So this game has maybe the most degenerate fireballs of any Street Fighter game ever. And there's one character that really stands out above all the others when it comes to fireball game. And that is going to be Sagat. In particular, Old Sagat. So in Super Turbo, you can pick the new version of every character or the old version. The biggest difference between new and old is the super bar. You can see player two Sagat has a super bar, player one doesn't. That's because player one is old Sagat. They also have a lot of different properties on their moves. And one thing worth noting is that old Sagat, almost everything about him is better than new Sagat. A lot of his moves do more damage. So you can see there I did 24 damage with the crouching heavy punch. New Sagat did 21. So there is a difference in a lot of his damage. His dragon punch is a lot more useful because as you can see, his dragon punch is only one hit. Whereas New Sagat, his Dragon Punch is a lot of hits, which sounds like maybe a good thing, but actually it creates some problems. Where you can see if I hit a jumping opponent, sometimes you only get a couple of the hits so you don't do that much damage. But as Old Sagat, you will always do max damage because there's only one hit, so his Dragon Punch ends up doing a lot more. But the biggest difference you'll probably notice between the two is the speed of their fireball recovery. So Old Sagat, his fireballs actually recover four frames faster than new Sagat. For the heavy versions, it's 38 frames versus 42 frames. So old Sagat has the second fastest fireball recovery in the game behind Guile. And get this, his low tiger shot actually hits low. It must be blocked crouching, which is simply ridiculous. Like why would, why would there be a low hitting projectile that does this much damage? I mean, you can see it just does insane damage and like three of them stuns. So you get stunned really quick with this. So uh, yeah, really crazy. Also, he has the high one, of course, which is very hard to jump. It kind of has that similar property to Ryu Denjin Fireball, where it covers the screen so fast that if they try to jump it, they're going to get clipped out of the jump startup. And then the difference in speed between his slow and fast fireballs is also really remarkable. You can see the slow fireball almost feels like a Chun-Li fireball or something. It is so ridiculously slow. And then the fast one is like a laser. It's just full screen in like a tenth of a second. So so yeah, the different speed of the fireballs makes them very, very difficult to get around because, you know, you try to jump early, but it turns out it was a slow one. You end up landing on it. Uh, it's just a huge pain. And if you get hit out of the air by a fireball in this game, you also get knocked down. In most games, you'll just flip and stand back up on your feet. But in this game, any fireball that hits out of the air will knock down, which gives you plenty of time to set up more of them that will be really impossible to get through so this character is an absolute nightmare he's generally considered one of the best if not the best in the game people don't even really play him in japan some people say it's due to you know people saying that it's unfair or that you'll get you know judged at the arcade if you pick old sagat in japan i don't know if that's true but it's something that a lot of people say but here in america yeah he's definitely an absolute monster all right so let's see how this works in practice here we're fighting against old sagat me with t-hawk all we got to do is get in once guys and surely <laughs> surely we'll win oh i actually got in but i messed up the punish feels bad oh my god the anti-air okay oh and i missed the punish again do you see how fast the recovery is on dragon punch dude oh my god okay okay i just gotta get in one time and i can win this is a pretty hard matchup as it turns out grappler versus one of the best fireball characters of all time let me in let me in oh by the way sagat sweep is really crazy as well i don't know if i mentioned that wow i think i traded him a dragon punch there or he missed the input okay we got in we got in get him to the corner block and punish now's my chance walk under good block from him but we got the 360 anyway going for the big cross up but he had the dp on lock guys i had my moment oh and that, that was actually unblockable that was jump recovery Ooh, for the one time for the one time <laughs> okay 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 he got game one 
He got game one. But if I can just get in and not drop, we can do it. Just believe, guys. Just believe. I just got to get in one time. Come on. Playing on Fightcade, by the way, for those of you who don't know, Fightcade.com is an emulator. You can play some of these games on. Oh, God. He's going in? R Sagat Rushdown? All right, let's go. Okay, okay. Guys, just when I thought that I was it. Okay, DP through the fireball. If I get hit by the DP, I was in chip rage. There was nothing I could do. Okay, okay, okay. Last shot. Last shot here. Last shot, I believe. Round start, DP. It hurts. I keep getting hit on landing frames, man. But yeah, so there's no trip guard in this game. Meaning that you cannot block when you land. Regardless of whether you press a button in the air. You can't block a low, I should say. Alright, I'm in. Let's bait. Oh, he didn't fall for it. I was too far for the 360. Nice DP. Okay. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little look down memory lane. I love jumping back into these old games and seeing how crazy and ridiculous some of this stuff is. Uh, but, you know, Super Turbo, still a super fun game. I have very fond feelings about it, but I got to admit, Old Sagat might be a little bit overtuned. But hopefully you guys found this video informative and entertaining. And uh, once again, check out the jamcrossmerch.com if you want the folks shirt. Only a hundred of them. So get in there, guys. Available in multiple colors. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye, everybody.